Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Frank Koontz. I'm the mayor of the city of Wenatchee. I'm really excited to uh, be here today with some uh, distinguished uh, members of our um, delegation uh, standing right there behind me. And um, as I told uh, the secretary, there are mountains around here. We just can't quite see them today. They are there. They're over there. They're over there. He believes me because he could actually see the river today. So he knows I'm not, uh, not fibbing. Uh, Wenatchee is a really remarkable place. We do great things around uh, this region. You know, the first bridge ever built across the Columbia River is our pedestrian bridge just down the street. Um, we build hydroelectric dams. We grow the greatest apples in the world as the apple capital of the world. We now grow diamonds just down the road here, yep. right? Yep. Uh, in a little machine that takes a little speck of a diamond and creates the pressure of the earth and makes diamonds in our town. Link Transit has been a leader in the electric bus um, for the last 10 years. First ever, I'll get the term wrong, wireless inductive charging station in the country right here in Wenatchee. Yet here we are today celebrating another massive achievement, which is the funding of Confluence Parkway, a, a new uh, um, transportation part of our valley that is going to make huge changes to, to our region, both in terms of safety, uh, moving pedestrians, helping Link, um, just an incredible project and we're so excited to be celebrating that today. Uh, none of that would have happened without the support of the ladies and gentlemen who are standing behind me today uh, who have made all of this possible. So, um, and to the secretary, I just want to say thank you for uh, your final sign off. Um, the secretary was a mayor at one point in his career and understands that uh, even as I call us small town USA, uh, we do get a piece of the pie from time to time for US transportation dollars and I just appreciated his support for this. So thank you all very much and I think uh, Rick McBride, are you next? Good morning and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Fire Chief Brian Brett was not able to attend today. He regrets it, but uh, he asked me to step in for him. He said that's on one condition only he said, you have to be able to say it within two minutes. And he knows that's going to be a challenge. So um, we just like to be able to say thank you to our electeds for doing this. It is incredible. Uh, for those that have lived here for 20, 30 years, you'll understand what I'm about to say. With the increase of traffic and the congestion issues, we've been seeing an increase of motor vehicle accidents in our community. And with the increase of congestion, we've seen a decrease in our response times trying to cross over the Wenatchee River to the north and for our north end station to come into town. So those are gonna all be changing. Our hopes are that the motor vehicle accidents will be decreasing, our response times will be getting much better. And the last point the chief had mentioned to me is something that struck a nerve because uh, for those who have lived here for a while, you'll understand when I say the Sleepy Hollow fire, one of the lessons we learned is that evacuating people, evacuating our citizens out of our areas that are uh, being threatened is critical. And to be able to move people quickly out to a safe area is gonna be achieved once this project's done. So on behalf of the fire commissioners, uh, Chief Brett, the Wenatchee Valley Fire Department, and I'll speak for all the first responders, thank you very much folks for pulling through and helping us out in time of need. Lisa. Thank you. Good morning. Buenos dias, bienvenidos. Welcome. My name is Teresa Bendito, and I am a co-founder of Parque Padrinos. Parque Padrinos is uh, also in English is part godparents. We are a grassroots community organization that formed in the process of the renovation of Mahal Park in South Wenatchee. Um, our work didn't end after the park renovation uh, was finished. Our work continues now. We focus on park programming accessibility, and accessibility, as well as community building. Uh, today, Parque Padrinos would like to express our support and gratitude uh, for this uh, investment in the Apple Capital uh, Loop project. We are especially excited about the expansion of the pedestrian bridge because it will continue to provide alternative transportation methods for our community, especially the South Wenatchee area, and it will create safer options for our community, uh, as well as connect this beautiful resource that we have here, the riverfront area, to those who reside in the South Wenatchee area. Barque Padrinos knows firsthand the myriad of positive 
uh, outcomes that can come with these capital investment projects, especially when the community engagement is done at the forefront. We know that the physical transformation is only a part of this, and we are very excited to see the community building, greater civic participation, and the com community building that can come from this. Thank you all. And up next, we will have our representative, Dr. Kinshry. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa, and uh, and thank you to everybody here. I am just thrilled to have Secretary Buttigieg here with us today to see firsthand the importance of this project. Uh, and I want to thank Deputy Chief McBride also for being here and explaining the different perspectives, the safety perspectives, the transportation perspectives of this, uh, of this project. I just want to give you a little bit of history. Uh, when I was first running for office, this was back in 2018, nobody knew if I would make it through or, or not. Uh, but I sat down with Mayor Kuntz and uh, he showed me this a big map on his wall and explained how this project would be transformational for the cities of Wenatchee and East Wenatchee. That it would help with transportation, that it would help with getting produce to market, uh, that it would connect two communities with many modes of transportation, uh, relieving traffic, creating a path for evacuations and emergency response. Um, and that so many people had come together to work on this over years and that it, it was the dream project. Um, here we are today sucking in smoke because of wildfires. And I just think it's a really good reminder of how susceptible we are to that kind of danger and why it is so important to have evacuation routes. Um, and I just wanna also um, point out that, you know, this was local elected, state elected, uh, us at the federal level, the Culver Federated Tribes, Yakima Nation, and everybody came together. Uh, I wanna give one uh, more note of thanks in addition to having Secretary Buttigieg here, uh, which is I have to give some credit to the Cosmic Crisp Apple. <laughs> so here's the story. When I first met Secretary Buttigieg a couple years ago, I decided to bring him a little care package uh, from Wenatchee. We are the apple capital of the world, and I brought him a little basket of Cosmic Crisp apples and, says, and said, here's a taste. They're not available anywhere else in the country. And so when we worked hard uh, to basically uh, you know, make our case for why this project uh, should be one of the 20 in the country that would get funded, uh, I reminded him that this is where Cosmic Crisp Apples come from, and that if you wanted them in Washington, D.C., uh, this would be a critical project. So um, thank you, Cosmic Crisp Apples. Thank you, thank you to all of our electeds. Thank you, Secretary Buttigieg, for being here. And uh, uh, I'm excited to see how this project unfolds. Uh, and thank you to my, my staff who have been indispensable. I am handing this over to Senator Cantwell. Well, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Uh, she's. I think it was more than Cosmic Crisp. <laughs> I think she was a dedicated uh, visionary about what needed to happen here and so appreciate your articulation of those issues both at the federal and the state level. So thank you for your hard work on that. I want to just mention a few people who are here. I want to thank Commissioner uh, Overbay from the county for being here. Obviously, Representative Brad Hawkins for being here. Our state treasurer is here. This is a big event. Everybody's here to see Secretary Buttigieg and also our state DOT director, if you want to wave your hand here. that Thank you for being here, everybody, and uh, participating. Well, I wanted to uh, thank Secretary Buttigieg for coming all the way to central Washington and for the investment that he saw in this project. He was very committed from the very beginning on making this major investment. And we all know what the importance is, but I want to thank uh, Mayor Kuntz because he too has been dedicated for a long time. Representative Schreier articulated that. Um, obviously working together with everybody, but the mayor really put a lot of effort over many years on this project. In fact, I think, Mayor, I think you and I forced uh, toured this area in 2016. And I'm particularly proud of this because it uses the national freight dollars, now called INFRA, something that we authored because we thought it was so important 
to move freight. And in this transportation bill that Patty and I just fought for, we ended up getting a 78% increase in the amount of dollars going into freight programs because we know how important it is for the state of Washington to move freight. So, but we're really here for the um, over uh, 60,000 direct jobs and over 100,000 jobs within the whole tree fruit industry because this is the apple capital of the world. <laughs> and we're here to make sure that multi-billion dollar industry remains competitive. And to do that, we needed to improve the infrastructure. As already has been articulated, this project does three important things. It reduces congestion, ensuring that the apple industry can efficiently get their products to market. It improves safety, which is so critical, given the commuters and pedestrians and making sure that you're separating them from those heavy trucks. And people don't realize there's been double digit growth here in Wenatchee over the last decade. So the fact that everything continues to grow, we needed to help improve safety. And third, it gives us that response area to move in case of a fire in a dedicated source. So as Wenatchee has grown, we've said we will meet the infrastructure needs of the community. Cars and trucks will be able to safely cross over these BNSF railroad blockages. The secretary knows how important that is to get these at-grade crossing improvements. And the confluence route, which over the Wenatchee River will allow trucks to bypass Wenatchee Avenue, also getting them to their destination faster. There is an average of something like 4,000 trucks that go through this area a day. It's hard to believe that, but with the traffic across Highway 2 and the various aspects that touches the Apple Loop, it's so important that we continue to make these improvements. So I just want to say thanks to everybody. Congratulations. I'm glad the fire chief is here. I'm glad we're going to have this dedicated route because we obviously will need it for the future, but we're all coming together, giving the community many more opportunities for the future and fighting to continue to make this one of the most robust apple growing regions of the United States. Now I'd like to call on my colleague, Senator Murray, who definitely, definitely on transportation infrastructure dollars is always there, both on previous on Tiger and on appropriations, constantly fighting on transportation infrastructure for the whole state. I don't know what, I, 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 there's so many projects across our state. In fact, everybody's thanking her for Pangborn. So Fanny, thank you for Pangborn. Okay. Well, a little bit. Um, okay, I just broke the mic, sorry. <laughs> well, thank you all for, for joining us today. And I wanna <laughs> thank Senator Cantwell uh, for that introduction. But I want to thank all of the elected officials here. It is amazing, Mr. Secretary, to see this many officials. We've got federal, state, local, county commissioners, fire police chiefs, and it, I don't want it. Kim to have to hold that for the <laughs> entire time. Can I take it off? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Assume that works. All right. Thank you, and thank you to everybody for their work and partnership on this Apple Capital Loop project. I know it hasn't been easy, and this community really has worked long and hard for this day. But from the start of their Our Valley, Our Future project, it really has been so inspiring to see so many people be a part of making their community a better, more inclusive place. And I'm thrilled to be here today to join all of you, along with so many great partners, to celebrate what that commitment has made possible. Wenatchee really is central to commerce and activity in Washington State, and the Apple Capital Loop is really at the heart of it. Every day, 100,000 vehicles move through this loop, getting families and freight where they need to go. As you know, our iconic Washington State apples travel up and down these roads to get from grocer growers to grocery stores. And of course, so many people visit this loop trail that we were on today for a walk or a ride or on some days, fresh air, maybe. <laughs>
not today. <laughs> In short, the Apple Capital Loop is a hub for this community and a cornerstone of the local economy. And it really is critical to make sure that it is safe and efficient and environmentally friendly, which is why I fought along with all these people to bring that $92 million infra grant here to Wenatchee that is the largest infra grant in the country in 2021. <laughs> so this is, to put it simply, a big deal. It is going to make a huge difference, helping us clear traffic congestion, keep our cars and our freight moving, combat climate change, provide an improved evacuation route for our families, as we talked about, and supercharge growth here, not just here, but all across our state. Projects like this help us get products to market faster. They move people around the region faster and safer, and ultimately help us avoid supply chain bottlenecks. And that helps keep costs lower for Washington State families. If that wasn't enough, this federal investment is also going to make the loop more accessible to walkers and runners and bikers and pets. So by upgrading the pipeline pedestrian bridge, more people will be able to enjoy the beautiful Columbia River behind us and all the natural beauty that the Wenatchee Valley has to offer. I was so glad that I was able to work with so many amazing great leaders here to secure this grant. And I am looking forward to working with all of you every step of the way to ensure we get this project across the finish line. So it's a joy to be here with all of you on this amazing great day and it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the Secretary of Transportation who has worked hard on this, uh, who's been our partner every step of the way, who has taken multiple phone calls <laughs> from all of us uh, to get this done and we're delighted for you to be here in beautiful Wenatchee today to celebrate. Secretary Pete Bittiger. Well, thank you, and uh, what a what a pleasure and a privilege to be here. And uh, let me see if I can sort that. Um, there we go. All right. We're all about state of good repair here. So. Um, and uh, uh, I want to thank the uh, uh, so many members of the community for making us feel welcome here. I want to thank the wonderful uh, musical performers who I hope are uh, are still here. The mariachis. Uh, thank you. And uh, I just appreciate you all making me feel. Uh, very much at home. Can you hear me? All right? There we go. Um, mayor, thank you for the, the warm welcome. I always feel affinity with a with a fellow mayor, uh, and the, the the pride that you have and, and so many local leaders have here in this community is contagious. I want to thank the deputy chief for uh, reminding us of uh, what's at stake in terms of safety and emergency response. Just as the smoke lingering in the air reminds us of the importance of resilience and how that's connected uh, to having alternatives and ways to get around. Uh, to Teresa and everybody involved in the, in the community, thank you for reminding us that when we are building infrastructure, we're not just building roads and bridges, we are helping to build community. And uh, the, the participation that has come uh, from community members, I think, is part of what has made this project so strong and so compelling. Uh, I, I'm delighted to be reunited uh, in her own district with uh, Representative Schreier. I do remember the, the, those apples. Uh, and we, uh, we met earlier at the Apple Commission today, and the, the drive over gave me just enough time uh, to sink my teeth into one of those cosmic crisps. Uh, uh, understand why you're so proud of that. Uh, and uh, more to the point, really admire uh, the representative's focus on bipartisan problem solving. You see uh, here uh, so many people who are together uh, across the lines of federal, state, county, uh, city limits, and municipalities, across uh, lines of Democrat, Republican, and Independent just working to get things done and when that happens it's a lot easier for us to be a good partner and yes you get great results to show for that so thank you for that excellent work and to senator cantwell and senator murray uh, they have made this project possible many times over uh, because first of all the infra project to uh, the infra program the entire thing uh, was largely uh, uh, possible was designed uh, by Senator Cantwell, who is also Chair Cantwell, of course, uh, of uh, the Committee of Oversight that plays such an important role uh, in shaping and, uh, and, and crafting and then driving the legislation that makes everything we do possible. And then, it's true, Senator Murray's right, my phone rang a lot 
uh, with uh, uh, both of your senators, your excellent uh, delegation, along with your representative, uh, making the case for those investments to come to Washington State. And we we're so pleased to be able to say yes. And, and I do want to make sure you know just how competitive this program was and is. Uh, we, we got $7 billion worth of applications last year for less than $1 billion in funding. So it is really to the credit of this community uh, that the Apple Capital Loop made the cut and that it was the single largest infra uh, grant that we awarded last year. So I want to acknowledge the strong support it had, bipartisan support, Congresswoman Schreier along, alongside Congressman Newhouse making that bipartisan case. Uh, and again, there is a direct line between the great improvements that you're going to see us making across the country and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that Senators Murray and Cantwell and Representative Schreier back. That is what's making it possible for us to say yes more often as we get all of these wonderful ideas and, and visions coming from communities uh, competing for, for those federal resources. And this is community driven. Uh, we're, we're, we're proud of it because the, the, the design of this program and many like it are predicated on the insight that the best ideas, certainly the project designs, aren't going to come out of Washington. Uh, they're going to come to Washington from, and I, I mean Washington, D.C., uh, from uh, communities uh, across the country. We just need to make sure more of the funding comes out of our building, and that's exactly what we're doing here. It's National Apple Month in October, uh, and so a perfect time to visit the state that leads the nation in apple production and, and to be here uh, in, uh, in the very heart of apple country. And uh, you know, we, the, some of the data that came in in this process included the city of Wenatchee letting us know that in an average year, a billion dollars worth of apples are stored, delivered, packed in Wenatchee Valley. And that work being done by farmers, by pickers, by packers, by truckers, by rail workers, by everybody across that, uh, that chain allows Americans to enjoy that produce all year long. But it hasn't been as easy as it ought to be to get that product and the inputs in and out of this area. This is one of just a handful of metro areas in the country that doesn't have a direct connection to the interstate highway system, and yet a vital economic hub for the region where you have, as was mentioned before, thousands of trucks, dozens of trains passing through here on a weekly basis. It's an important waypoint, not just for, for apples, but for all kinds of goods making their way from the ports of Seattle and Tacoma as they move east to Chicago and onto the rest of the country. And that's part of why this Apple Capital Loop is so important. It strengthens our supply chains by making it faster, easier, and safer to move freight through this area. It reduces traffic and congestion, which means less pollution in the air and simpler and faster commutes. And it's a vital part of ensuring public safety, as again, we're being reminded today uh, just how important it is to make it easier for citizens to evacuate in the event of a disaster and easier for first responders to reach people in need. There's so much to celebrate here. Better public transit, greater access to walking and biking, safer intersections, the, the list just goes on and on. And uh, the, the context that this is happening in is delivering for the American people the kind of transportation network that works so well that most of the time, you're not even thinking about it. You're thinking about whatever matters most in your life, in the community, in your business, in agriculture, in uh, all of the wonderful family activities that go on in this community and in this very part property. That's what's possible with good investment. And that, in turn, is part of an even bigger story where, again, with support from the members of your federal delegation standing here with me, uh, we've been able to see an incredibly productive year in D.C., where the president has been able to sign laws that will save families hundreds or even thousands of dollars on health care, on prescription drugs, and on energy costs, make the biggest investment ever in the fight against climate change. Yeah, we're excited about that. <laughs> Strengthen care and, and benefits for America's veterans and bring high-tech manufacturing jobs back to America. It is about making everyday life just a little bit better. So I'm so thrilled to be able to see this terrific work on the ground, to be with the leaders who help make it happen. And uh, as I'm sure the, uh, the mayors who are here will agree, the one thing that's better than, than an award announcement is the day you get to bring out those ribbon cutting scissors. So I will be closely watching for uh, announcements about the completion of this fantastic work. And again, congratulate you for uh, this very successful, very competitive application and all of the work that went into it. Thanks again for the chance to be here.
Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here.